Hi, everyone. Alex here from Cleveland. I will be joined shortly by Linda in Kansas. So we are doing a tag team this morning for you guys on our live stream. So hello. I am going to uh, throw it back here and open up our chat and say hi to everyone. Thank you for joining us. You can watch on both YouTube and Facebook on our live streams that happen pretty much every Tuesday. Uh, we we did, we missed you guys live last week. We had a pre-recorded session for you um, from Santa Fe. I was going to say live, but it wasn't really live. We recorded it the day before so that we could prepare a little show and tell for you guys that we did during our event. And we recorded that and then... Um, we're presenting you guys our fractured jackets. We had a really successful, wonderful time in Santa Fe, and it looks like we are going to be doing that event again next year. At least that's that's the hope. So if you want to be a part of any of our, of our events and be considered to join, they, they tend to sell out very quickly. So you can go to our website at sewingworkshop.com, click on events, and under our events page, um, particularly for the Santa Fe page, you can join our wait list for events. And that way you will be notified first when we put out a new event. So join our wait list for events and maybe see you in Santa Fe next year. But if you want to join us this year, we have another event happening that will be very similar to our Santa Fe event. It's the Fractured Jacket class in Kansas. So if you have not been to Topeka, and want to come to our shop in Topeka, Kansas at the Sewing Workshop, we are having a fractured jacket class in Kansas this August. So uh, you can go to our website and check that out, so sewingworkshop.com, click on events, and you'll find a fractured jacket in Kansas section. You click on that and you'll get to know all the details there. So you can sign up for that if you are sad and you missed Santa Bay, because I would be sad too if I missed it. It was a delightful event. We had great, um, just a great group, and um, everyone was very diligent with their jackets. Everyone had a really good time. So, all right. Well, hello, everyone, again, and thanks for, for saying hi on the chat. And um, today is a fun live stream because Linda and I are going to be talking about the leopard print Picasso pants. I made these... A couple months ago, um, I feel like I needed to make something for So Kansas, and I hadn't made the Picasso pants, believe it or not. Linda talks about them all the time. And so I thought, I need to make Picasso pants. What's kind of a pant fabric that is somewhat neutral, can go with a lot of things? You wouldn't normally think of a leopard print to be neutral, but when you see this leopard print fabric, you're going to think, Wow, those, that actually is pretty neutral for an animal print. It goes with a lot of things. Every time I wear them, I get a ton of compliments. So we actually are providing a kit for you guys today. Uh, and so on our website, in our sale for this week, we have the leopard print Picasso pant kit that comes with enough fabric to make your Picasso pants thread elastic everything. So check it out. And Linda and I are going to talk about it. So let's get off the chat. I'm going to bring Linda on and we're going to get going and tell you all the things regarding Picasso pants, regarding our new bamboo top that's our new pattern this month for So Confident, and then other things we enjoy pairing with the Picasso pants. All right. Hi, Linda. Hello there. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me and thank you, Alex, for Good introduction. We did have a wonderful time in Santa Fe and it was just a kind of a mind blowing experience in a way. We had some side tours that were very interesting, even some surprise visits by an artist who we really adore. Um, but people just kind of swooped right in and, and um, sat down and started working on jackets and the results were amazing. Um, we do have a video of how to do the three processes of fractured jackets, and you can still purchase that video. Um, if you sign up for the fractured class in August, you do get that video at no charge. Uh, it's We provide that free, so you can come to the workshop and really have a sense of uh, at least the techniques. Of course, you'll get more inspiration when you see the actual jackets and visit with the instructors. There are three instructors for that. But, um, you know, it's, it's free if you sign up for the class. But you can purchase the class, and that's on our website. So 
Well, Alex, I have to start off with, I have to digress just a moment because uh, everybody, most people know that I'm a Wall Street Journal fashion follower. And I was uh, delighted to learn and see over the weekend that the off-duty edition, which is a supplement on Saturdays, has finally fashion ages up. And it's a whole article talking about how the mainstream big time designers are finally using older women for their models. Like Diana Ross, who's 79, modeling for Saint Laurent. Maggie Smith, who's 89, models for Loewe's puzzle bag. And then I opened up another uh, magazine and here's Lauren Hutton with her teeth with the gap. Such a signature thing uh, for Saint Laurent as well. So I don't know, that was pretty nice. Of course, these uh, women who are about 80 uh, still eat nothing but lettuce and they're 5'11 or six foot and they uh, weigh 110 pounds, but whatever, you know, <laughs> that's a whole other story. But at least we can see the wrinkles in the face and, and, and just the general character of an older woman. And I think it's wonderful that the designers are finally getting into that. So I had to. I actually have one too. I have uh, Cindy Crawford here with Donna Karen in the Vogue magazine, uh, February, March issue show. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's, it's fantastic. Um, okay, so this is February. We're promoting the bamboo top for our So Confident project for February. And I have it behind me. I have a couple of new fabrics that I pulled out that I think would make really interesting. Uh, bamboo tops. Of course, we're featuring prints for this this month. And so let me show you those. So we're particularly talking about rayon and rayon chalets. These are very drapey print fabrics. I love this one with the uh, yellow green and teal and off white. This would make a stunning bamboo top. Has some Kind of has a little leopard print to it when you see it up close. It's more of a splatter, really. But uh, And there is kind of a, it's not what I call a plaid, but there would be perhaps a little matching going on if you wanted to match those horizontal lines. But I don't know that you really would have to. And then the other one <clears throat> is another novelty print. I love novelty prints. Uh, this one has automobiles, trees, mountains. So it's more of a scenic. Where's that car? Got to find that car. Oh, there it is at the top. Yeah. I think that's really fun. Lots of great colors to it. Be wonderful drape. So check those out for your bamboo tops. Uh, we are, I think, out of the kits that were the original kits. I think, Alex, you have on one of the bamboo kit tops today, I think. But I think we're out of them. If we have any, we have like one. So anyway, but if you join the class uh, at any time, you also get our Q&As, which we've already done. And in the, um, I guess it was the first Q&A, wasn't it, Alex, where I taught how to turn this bamboo into this bamboo pullover. So it has the same elements of tucks and pleats, but now it has a neck band. It was cut on the fold in the front. And it's just a totally different looking garment. But you learn how to do this in a Q&A. So our Q&As this year are quite informative. And there's usually a lesson, something to learn within the Q&A. And then our second Q&As of the month are show and tell. And I learn as much from that as anything because that's when our customers uh, show off what they've made. And it's just so much fun to see all the fabrications and the variations, modifications and all of that. So you can always join the bamboo top class for the month, or you can still join for the year. All right. Yeah, our um, Q&A that's coming up this month for the bamboo top is Thursday. So there's still time to join So Confident for February, and you can even still join for the year. So if you join now, you can pay $45 a month and still get access to 11 months, the remaining 11 months. February included of So Confident. So if you want to join this Q&A and see what it's all about on Thursday, you can sign up for the class. Right. Great. 
All right. Uh, Alex, do you want to talk to me about your pattern testing workshop in Cleveland coming up? Sure. Um, yeah, so Cleveland is probably my favorite city in the world. That might be surprising for some of you, but um, I do love it. And Betsy, Aaron, myself, and new addition, Nancy Schreiber is going to join us in Cleveland in April. So on April 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th, we are going to be having a really good time in Cleveland, and we would love to have you guys join. Uh, we're we're getting more signups, and um, we're really excited about what is going to happen there. So on Tuesday, we begin the event at my house, which you're getting a little glimpse of my office, but just imagine like 75 more colors, and it's basically my house. So on Tuesday night, you're going to hang out at my house, and we're going to have cocktails and a little um, showcase of garments and just conversation and um, it'll be a good time. And then Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday are full days of sewing. So this is a, a newly introduced concept event for us, although Linda did this type of, of event years ago, and we are going to be testing a new pattern. And so this new pattern uh, is, I'll probably show you Linda if you have it with you, um, but it is tentatively called the Lakewood shirt, which is where I live in the neighborhood. And it is a button down shirt with um, some interesting details, kind of a, a slim sleeve and a, you know, a placket that actually hides the buttons. Um, and we're really excited to bring this pattern to you exclusively when you come to this event. And one of the things we've been talking about um, since just as we, as we progress in our event planning. Uh, we wanted to bring in Nancy Schreiber because she is just the master of all things hand stitching, Sashiko. And so in Santa Fe, actually, we saw a lot of hand stitch details on garments with things including French knots, maybe just a simple running stitch, maybe a hand stitch detail across a pocket or across a, a bodice or something. And so um, Nancy is actually going to be helping enhance and embellish this garment and showing some of her own techniques and some of her own teaching. And um, you guys are going to be adding those elements to this new pattern. So Linda has this garment for us, but there's still time to sign up for Cleveland. I know it's coming soon, um, but April is sounds like a good month to come to Cleveland. There hopefully won't be any snow. Uh, hopefully won't be any winter extended. So it'll like today is like 50 and sunny. So we're good. So don't be afraid of Cleveland. We'll take really great care of you. It'll be fun. So I'll show Linda and she has the garment and can talk a little bit more about it. I realize this is in black and maybe you can't see every little detail, but this is a very interesting front placket that can be worn either open or more closed. Um, a nice little uh, uh, bias finish to the neck. We use, we use the selvage for the bottom of the garment. But we're going to be open to some suggestions on this at the uh, pattern testing. We might make it longer, wider, boxier. Um, maybe we'll work on the sleeve and get it uh, maybe a little bit bigger. We don't know about that. We're still kind of working through this. But that's also the purpose of a pa pattern testing. We might be uh, imposing some of the details from this onto another pattern and learn how to do that. And of course, We'll always show you how to narrow the shoulders and add a bust start and all of that. So this is the general character of the garment. And um, so you're going to learn how to, to fit and make uh, a bodice, a, a, an upper garment, rather than the pants fitting, which we did in the last uh, Cleveland uh, workshop. OK, so let's get into Picasso pants, Alex. Um, you made your pants in this fabric. Yeah. And I tell you what, I, I think these are just about the cutest pants. Aaron and I are sitting here thinking, oh, my gosh, we've got to grab some of that fabric before it gets out of here. Because this, as you say, is like the perfect neutral. Yes, it's a leopard print, but it's very, very tiny. And there's just something about this. I've seen you wear this with like a sweatshirt. Uh, I, I chose two garments that I like to wear with Picassos. I have on the Zane top in a sweater knit. And then I also love the West End top in a sweater knit. I'm sorry, they're not the very same warriors. There's, uh, they're not quite matching, are they? 
But uh, anyway, I, there's just something about these pants. This is 100% viscose. It's a viscose crepe. So with that crepe texture, it makes it just that much easier to sew because there's a little bit of grip to the fabric. I like rayons that are rayon crepes, actually. They're pretty easy to sew, even though they're very drapey and they move around a little bit. With that crepe texture, it makes it much, much easier to uh, sew. So I don't know. There's just something. I don't know, Alex. You look good in them. Um, and I want a pair myself. So anyway, this is the fabric. Um, that's interesting. On the camera, I am seeing a stripe. Isn't that interesting? But when you, when I look at it straight on here and on you, I don't see that stripe. There's something about the camera that's picking up a little bit of the printing. Can you see the stripe, Erin, now that you really look at it? I've never noticed that before. Well, at any rate, it doesn't matter. They're vertical. We all need that. So, but, but throw that picture back up, Alex. I don't really pick up that stripe when they're on you. No, and yeah, I don't know what it is about these pants. I, I guess I should have been making Picasso pants long ago because I get, like I said, I get so many compliments when I wear them. And um, it's, these are just great pants, the Picasso pants. They're loose fitting lantern pants. They have a lot of pieces to them. They have a front side and back panel with this tapered bottom wedge. So there are pieces that kind of connect this bottom section of the pant. Um, it has a flat front waistband, which is a very flattering waistband technique wh where there's elastic on the sides and back, but not the front. I have them with me here. I'm not wearing them because I intentionally wanted to sort of show you them uh, and show myself handling the fabric. But I was just out having a day with a friend after I made these and uh, had her take some pictures of me in front of this wall. So um, again, this is a, a great pant, the Picasso pant, and can be made in a lot of fabric, but this fabric is particularly drapey and has just a really nice hand and um, I think shows off the shape of the pant really well. So I like the length that you have uh, there in this photo. So let's talk about that a little bit. I have I have reconsidered the length that I make mine now. I actually lengthened the pattern one inch and I think you lengthened your pattern two inches. I but I, I think that they, I have been noticing that I've been wearing them too short, especially in the winter. I actually have kind of a summer length and a winter length, <laughs> uh, but I like the length that they are on you. And that, that puts them right above the ankle and in fact, I was looking at the side and the back of the pants are about an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter from the top of the heel of, of the top of my shoe at the back. So I think the way you photographed them there is to me about the perfect length. Would you agree with that, Alex? Yeah, I, I do. I'm, I'm particularly tall. Um, what I learned I was 75% taller than most of the world. Really? <laughs> yeah. Being 5'10", being you're like taller than 75% of people. So um, being being in the whatever range I'm in, um, I do tend to lengthen pants and lengthen things. But yes, I did lengthen this two inches. So, well, do you want to show them how you did that? Sure. So um, this is a illustration I used from a previous live stream I did. So this is the nine lives pattern, but the lengthening of the pattern is um, something you can do to any piece. So ignore the nine lives part, but I hear, I hear right instructions on how to lengthen the pattern. And also I'm going to give a little plug. Uh, I have my fashion fitting workbook with me. If you don't have the fashion fitting workbook on page 54, it tells you how to lengthen pants patterns. So what's great about the fashion fitting workbook is on this page, it gives you the instructions on how to actually lengthen your pants. You can make notes, draw pictures. I have a little note here, notes here for myself. And then on the next page in the workbook, you have a sloper. And on this, you actually practice with a small scale pants piece how to lengthen your pants pattern. So this is really great to use before maybe you want to actually use your, your pants pattern piece. You get to use the fashion fitting workbook. And so we highly recommend this. Grab your fashion fitting workbook. Um, but 
this technique is in this book on page 54, which is essentially what I'm showing you here in this presentation. And I also did a little video that I'm gonna show you guys here of me actually taking my Picasso pants and lengthening them. So when I did this, I um, took my Picasso pants pattern. Right now I have the back, but I would of course do this to the front as well. And on this pattern, there is a lengthen and short line. So I cut a line with a ruler through that lengthen and shorten line on the printed pattern. And then I'm going to draw a horizontal line along this marked bold line parallel to the grain line. So what I need to do is extend the grain line, which is what I'm going to do here shortly. But right now I'm lengthening the leg. So I'm spreading the pattern the amount that I need. And I'm going to place paper in front of Sorry, I'm going to place paper under the pattern, keeping that grain line straight. And here I am taping it in place. So we have, we like to recommend the um, medical exam paper for any paper for pattern work. So you can get that on Amazon. Amazon. You can also call us. We, we can sell it to you by the roll. We also have a pattern work kit that we recently released for another workshop. And in our pattern work kit, we offer the role of medical exam paper. So here I am putting that paper underneath my pattern. I've extended my pattern two inches and drawn a line with my ruler. And then here I am going to uh, extend the grain line, making sure that grain line is straight. And if you're wondering what that sound is in the background, that's definitely my dryer. So sorry about that. but. Uh, you're, uh, you're seeing my, my whole work here. So I'm extending this grain line and drawing this grain line so that it fully matches the other. I'm not, I'm not lining up the side seams. I'm not lining up the crotch seams, but I'm going to extend my grain line to make sure that that's um, fluid. All right. That is how you lengthen a pattern. And so in order to then get the... Um, the uh, other, you use a hip curve then to blend the, the uh, cutting lines on either side. So you can um, match that up. From there, um, just so you guys can see the fabric a little bit more, this is a little bit of a, some, some pictures of the fabric. Like Linda said, this is 100% viscose crepe in this kit today, we give you two yards of this fabric, which is 54 inches wide. We give you one yard of one inch elastic and we give you thread. All right. Well, there are some other things that we can do to the Picasso pants. And one is you can add a pocket. Now there are a couple ways to add a pocket. One is <clears throat> to actually have a patch pocket that straddles the, the side panel. So here is, whoops, I always have to work backwards because of this camera. So here's a seam and here's a seam and here's the pocket. So it's just sewn into each seam and then across the bottom and open at the top. But when you buy the Picasso pants pattern, either the printed version or the digital version, you get a, a pattern template for making a, an inseam pocket. And I really like this because you can put it in the, what I call the front seam of the side panel. And it's very hidden and it kind of falls into a sort of a valley of your body. So you don't even know that it's there. It's not bulky and you don't, I don't know. I like a pocket. It's, I've thought about this. I don't really use a pocket for anything, but I like to put my hand in a pocket with, you know, that kind of um, fashion slouch, I'll call it, you know, just kind of the hip out and, and um, you know, like the models do, like those aging models do. So there are two ways to do pockets, which I really like. Uh, the pants I have on are the fabric that we talked about last week, which is the 
polyester and spandex uh, crepe, you know, the magic fabric that absolutely won't wrinkle. It's the, my favorite fabric. And so the other thing I, I did or didn't do really is there's some top stitching on this pattern that's in the guide sheet, but I didn't do that on this particular fabric. Now I'm, I could have, but I was afraid that I might get a little bit of puckering. You know, there's not a lot of melding that goes along with polyester. I haven't been a polyester fan really my whole sewing life, but there's something about this fabric that changed my mind. And so I wanted the look to be very soft and smooth, and I didn't want to disrupt that with some top stitching. You can also attach the bottom wedges that form that lantern shape to the upper pieces and eliminate that horizontal seam across the bottom altogether. That's another way to go. So you can even make them a little bit sleeker. But it's definitely the profile that we're seeing all over ready to wear and it doesn't seem like it's going away anytime soon. Um, as Alex said, that the, the waistband is wonderful. Uh, it has a flat portion in the front and then elastic all the way around the back. So you get a nice smooth uh, pant coming out of the waistband. There are a couple of tucks, one on each side, wherever they are right there. And that's a nice feature too. So I always feel really, um, I don't know, kind of, I, I use the word svelte in these pants uh, for uh, being, uh, you know, a, a, a more loose fitting pant. You don't want to make these too tight. I think you need plenty of ease in the pants. I have lots of ease in these pants. I have a good, uh, probably 12 inches total, six inches on each side. And that's what I like. So you don't want these pants touching you. You want them to fall very nicely. I've made them in everything from linen to cotton to wool, wool crepe, polyester, all kinds of fabrics. So, all right. So that's Picasso, right? Anything else you want to say about the Picassos, Alex? Well, I wanted to uh, show mine. So okay. I did not have pockets and I did not make pockets for mine but maybe in hindsight I, I would have. But what I did do, and this was kind of fun, I, um, in order to make the waistband, I just used the selvage. So I um, was able to cut a long strip for my waistband. And what's fun about this selvage is it has the um, color markings here. And so I was able to kind of center that on the front and then center it on the back. But again, this is a very cool elastic treatment and waistband treatment on pants, very flattering. So these are my pants and right here in the flesh. So um, you can't see the, the seams for the panels or the bottom elements here in this fabric, really. Sorry about the sun, but um, which, which is also kind of nice. It, it has, it's a very forgiving fabric, but um, you know, always we like to sometimes consider selvages for different parts of the garment. So this was a fun way to do that. You know what, Alex, we just discovered something. Um, we have reordered this fabric to have for the kits. And this version of this, which is the same fabric, does not have that selvage. And I can't explain why. Oh. So I just realized that. Isn't that weird? Anyway, there's always a little surprise that happens on uh, live stream. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Well, either way, you could um, cut a different, you know, cut a different yeah. fabric for your for your waistband, um, right. you know, and think about piecing something together. But it's always fun to consider something like that. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of coordinates. I have on the Zane top, which is a very interesting top, very asymmetric, as you can see, seams down the front, one seam uh, over here. Uh, you can make the sleeves long or short as a traditional ready to wear uh, neck binding. Is that the way it is in the pattern? I think maybe we have an option of a keyhole opening if you make it in a woven, which you can. So I think that's actually the pattern. So I just close that up and put a ready to wear binding on it. But um, this is the same that I very much like with the Picassos. And I love this West End top. Now the West End top has the zipper down the front, has a hood. And it has these really interesting seams that come forward on the sides. So it's shorter in the front. And then there's a band. And we actually use a piece of 
lining fabric for this band on the bottom. You can use a contrast color or a print or something kind of fun for that. There's also a band on the bottom of the sleeve. So you could even match that to the bottom or do something contrasting as well. This is fun. You can wear it closed, you can wear it open. Uh, but both of these are in a sweater knit. So I have some sweater knits back here. And when I say sweater knit in this case, these are not heavy, bulky sweater knits. These are very nice, super soft knits that just happen to have a kind of very slight heathered, soft feel to them. So they're very lightweight. So to me, they go year round, uh, winter, summer, the whole thing. So we have uh, some neutrals that look really good with this. In this particular leopard fabric, there is a little bit of a camel color, matches this really well. So you could keep a whole tonal thing going with charcoal or camel, or you can pop some color with the, uh, what do we call this color? Um, raspberry, mustard, or the orange. So. Two of them are cotton and rayon, and three of them are rayon and uh, polyester. I think that's right, I better check. I think I'm right. Yeah, so, and they all have spandex in them. So, you know, they have a good recovery. Uh, they don't grow, they don't pill. I've worn this quite a bit and no pilling whatsoever. So I'm, I love this fabric, I love the drape, but mostly I love how soft and cozy and comfortable this fabric is. So, um, so how do you deal with this fabric? Well, there's a few little things, but mostly it's just sewing like a knit. You know, there's nothing particularly unusual about sewing a lightweight sweater knit, a knit like this. In my uh, sewing knits from Fit to Finish book, I have a whole section on sewing sweater knits. I also have it on my Craftsy class. It's a funny name for a class. I don't know why they named it that way, but, um, oh no, no, this is the one that's actually, you know what it is. It's the ultimate guide to sewing knits. I have another class that's real weird, uh, the way it's named, but this one is the ultimate guide to sewing knits. And it, that is separated into type of knit, weights of knits, and there's a whole lesson on sewing sweater knits. So you might wanna check that out. But, you know, I just use traditional seam finishes, uh, sewing the seam together and then surging the two edges together. Get it away from my orange sweater, I guess. Uh, three thread serge using isocord thread as my, for my surging thread. And I've, you know, the bulkier the fabric, this has a, a little bit of thickness to it, not much, but I keep the seam fairly wide uh, that when I trim it off with my serger. I don't get it. You're going to get a lump if you serge it too close. So that's about a half an inch wide, the seam allowance. And then I can just press the seam one direction and it's a real clean seam. Um, for hems, can't live without fusy web, can't live without my templates. If you watch our So Confident programs, you know that I use tagboard templates, which is a manila file folder all the time, cut to the width of the finished hem. And then I am applying Fusy Web, pressing the hem up over the template, taking the paper off of the Fusy Web and fusing the hems down so that when I sew that hem, which is a horizontal uh, or perpendicular to, well, it's the stretchiest part of the knit. That's a better way to say it. So I don't want that hem to stretch out and that fusing that hem down really makes all the difference in the world. Here's this same sweater knit and I have stitched it with a straight stitch and there's no stretching out of the hem when you use the fusy web. I always use a walking foot or an even feed feature. Uh, I have switched to a 5.5 millimeter throat plate on my sewing machine so that the fabric doesn't get caught down into the throat plate. But really it's just like sewing a t-shirt. So don't be afraid of a, of, um, a sweater knit. There's no reason to be. These are just really beautiful, soft, drapey knits. Think of it that way. You can serge the edge of the hems. You don't have to. Sweater knits are not as cleanly um, beautiful on an edge after you cut them. There is, I don't think the, the edges, they don't ravel, but they're not as sharp and clean as maybe a, a jersey or a cotton knit. 
So I do tend to serge the edges of the hems, finish things up pretty well on the inside of the garment. So have you ever sewn a sweater knit, Alex? Yeah, let me show you uh, what I just wore with these leopard Picasso pants. Okay. So last week I wore my Bristol top in a more of a like sweatshirt, sweater, sweater knit, I suppose. Um, and I made it with some contrasting gray uh, rib knit at the bottom for the bottom bands and also the cuffs. But what I love about this, even though it's a pretty basic sweatshirt style, and I didn't do a lot of contrasting or, or, you know, didn't use a, a big print on on the um, on the pattern. What I did do was a little bit of hand embroidery along the shoulder. So um, I just took a marking pen, a friction pen, and actually I made the whole garment, finished everything up, and wrote a little phrase. And when I wrote it in the friction pen, that was my template for doing a basic back stitch to create a full line for writing. So never forget to think about what embellishments and what um, just elements you can add to your garments. So this is the Bristol top. And like I said, I wore this last week with these leopard pants and it worked well. So this is another example of a knit garment that could um, work well with any of the fabrics Linda has mentioned. This is my Zane that I've made in a pink knit. So I did not use any other contrasting fabrics, although the Zane is also a fun one to consider just with all of the pieces that this pattern has in it. You can think about pairing different stash fabrics or other, other colors of knit for all of these pieces. But I did make my Zane in a knit, so I used the traditional ready to wear neck binding technique that we have. Like Linda said, it's in the pattern and in a lot of our So Confident tutorials. So um, this also pairs well with my leopard pants. So both of these patterns, the Bristol and the Zane could pair very well with my Picasso pants. I also wanna show you my bamboo top that I'm wearing in my Venice knit kit or Venice kit. Uh, with my Picasso pants. So here I am in this shirt that I'm wearing, my bamboo and my Picassos. I'm wearing Picassos here in a viscose linen in a really cool green. But, um, you know, this bamboo top goes really well with the Picassos. This bamboo top can be paired with a lot of really fun things too. Jeans, our getaway jeans pattern, the Hudson pants. But um, here is another version of how to how to style the Picasso pants just in another another fabric. So there you go. All right. So do we have any questions? We uh, we do. Um, can you talk a little bit about how to alter the pattern? I'm assuming the Picasso pattern for plus size? Um, actually, that side panel is to your advantage. Uh, that side panel can be expanded uh, a bit, um, quite a bit, actually. Um, you know, I always suggest that if you have, if you're a, a true plus size, maybe a 2X, 3X, 4X, something like that, if you have a pair of pants that you like the way they fit and you could sacrifice them. Maybe you have an old pair, you're ready to throw them out or you wear them around the house or something. Take them apart and then you've got a basic shape for a crotch, uh, seam, uh, both front and back, crotch depth, all of that. Uh, I like to use existing patterns, so to speak, or, or finished garment that you like already. And you can superimpose that onto the top of the Picassos, and then you can copy the, quote, bottom part, the leg style, onto that pattern. Uh, but if you're uh, maybe a 1X, 2X, 3X, something like that, I think it would be pretty easy to just expand the side panel or and expand 
extend the seams that connect to that side panel just a little bit as well. So I wouldn't get into the changing the crotch seam with, unless you kind of know what you're doing. Uh, one thing is these are generously sized and I think a lot of people can wear one size down. So if, for instance, I, I am wearing a, a size one size down, I make a little bit of an alteration for my tummy. Um, I don't use the chart for the elastic for the waist because I have a bigger waist than that. Uh, but I am wearing one size smaller than I actually measure, and I think they're plenty big. So think about that. Uh, so it depends on what range of plus size you are as to what you can do. But an XX, XXL 2X, um, you know, a lot of people can wear that who are maybe 2X, 3X. You might give it a try. How do you know if the pants pattern is the right length? Well... You want to tape the bottom lantern uh, pieces to the basic top part of the pants. So I would just overlap those pieces an inch and a, um, a quarter. No, yes, an inch and a quarter. That's two five eighths inch, which is a seam. And I would just hold that up to my side at the five eighths inch line at the, at the waist and stand in front of a mirror and let that hang and see how long they are. Fold up the bottom hem. I mean, it's always great to have somebody help you with that, but if you're by yourself, <clears throat> as most sewers are, uh, you can pretty much do that. Or you can do the same thing with a, a tape measure that you can kind of hang from here down and look at the number in the mirror and then compare that to the two pattern pieces that you've put together. Do you know what size of patch pocket is on the striped pants? No, I was going to measure that actually, and I forgot. But I'm going to say the size, it looks to me like it's about one, two, three, four, six inches high finished. And of course, the width of the side panel. And then I have about an inch hem at the top. So you would cut something the right width, and then six inches plus one inch for the hem plus a five eighths inch. So cut it seven and five eighths or seven and three quarters, something like that. What are some of the colors in the fabric and what would be your top choice for the fabric you would pair these pants with? Ooh, <laughs> that's kind of hard, but we'll start with the colors. So the background is off white. And then we have charcoal and camel, I'll call it, spots. So these two colors are what is, makes up the print in the, in the leopard. Um, I tell you what, there would be times when I would be right here, you know, very neutral. Um, there are days when I want to be more tonal. You're seeing a lot of this sort of tones going on and ready to wear. So I really love this neutral combination. But of course, if I'm going to pop it with color, it's probably this. You know, there's my color. Mm -hmm. So I think you can put any color you like. If you like blues, it will go with this. If you like reds, anything will go with this, in my opinion. That's how neutral I feel this is. Would the uh, knits be suitable for pants? Oh, they'd make fabulous pants. They'd make great Picasso pants. They'd make great Maison pants. Uh, you want a loose, soft pant. And that means to me, Picasso's, Maison's, possibly Hudson's, but, but beyond that, maybe things are too slim, maybe Saltwell's. But yeah, I think they make great pants because there is recovery to this because of the spandex. You can absolutely use it. You know, you could do a top and a bottom in the same sweater knit. That's the other look. All right. I think um, a lot of questions were answered in the chat. We are trying to do better at that as a, as a team. So um, if we didn't answer your question here in live, we tried to answer it in the chat. So definitely go back to the chat to review some of those. Otherwise, I think... Oh, well, we didn't, I guess we didn't talk about what you're wearing, if it isn't obvious, but you are wearing the Zane in a sweater knit, right? And you were wearing Picasso pants. I am wearing my bamboo top with Picasso pants. So we're, we are, we're wearing our Picasso pants with a lot of different things. <laughs> right. 
Exactly. I think that's all. Okay. So what's on sale today is all of the knits, fabrics, sweater knit fabrics. The, the leopard uh, print is in a kit that includes elastic and thread. Um, are the two rayon prints on sale? Do we know that? I think they probably are. Betsy can answer that question, I think, in the chat. And then, uh, so then pattern-wise, it's the Zane, the West End, and the Picasso pattern. That Picasso pattern is one of our most popular patterns of all time. So if you don't have it, you need to buy it. <laughs> the top is great, too. We talk about the pants more than the top, but I love the top. So that's what's on sale this week. So unless there are any more questions, we'll see you next week. Um, let's see, maybe, um, is there a sweater knit? We, maybe you could come close and show us a close up of your sweater knit so people okay. can maybe see the texture. Yeah. Little Heather going on there. You would, there is not really a cinnamon knit that we have, um, here in the live stream. But there is a question about a cinnamon knit. So Terracotta on Facebook, if you want to um, search our website for a cinnamon knit or uh, give us an email, uh, alex at sewingworkshop.com for particular questions about color and what works with what. Yeah, um, there are some other colors of the sweater knits. Um, there's a There are some greens, like a very dark olive. There's a forest green. Uh, um, Kind of forgotten there are some other colors of the sweater knits i don't recall a cinnamon but we have other cinnamon things so if you're looking for that kind of color we can probably help you out all right um i think that's all um yeah any questions feel free to email us thank you everyone Thank Good you. to have you. Grab your leopard print Picasso pant kit, and we'll see you next time. All righty. Bye-bye. Thanks.